provoking abundance through obedience. Provoking abundance through obedience. And I'm going to read my text from Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 to 8. We can read to 14. Let's see how time goes. But we'll start with the first eight verses. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 to 8. And I will read from the NLT version, the New Living Translation. If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully keep all his commands that I'm giving you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the world. You will experience all these blessings if you obey the Lord your God. Your towns and your fields will be blessed. Your children and your crops will be blessed. The offspring of your earth and flocks will be blessed. Your fruit basket and bread boards will be blessed. Wherever you go and whatever you do, you will be blessed. The Lord will conquer your enemies when they attack you. They will attack you from one direction, but they will scatter from you in seven directions. Verse 8 is powerful. Say, the Lord will guarantee a blessing on everything you do. And we fill your storehouses with grain. The Lord your God will bless you. In the land he is giving you. So it shall be in Jesus' name. All these blessings are powerful. They are also possible. On one condition. If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully keep all his commands that he is giving you from today and forever, the blessings are possible. They are also powerful. But they all depend on your obedience or my obedience. And so when we talk about obedience, what does it mean? To obey simply means to hear the word of God and act on it. So it is not sufficient for you to hear the word. It is equally important to act on the word. Obedience is when you determine in your mind, in your heart, to align your will to the will of God. To do what God has asked you to do. Obedience is your complete surrender to the authority of God and the decision to act upon his instruction. That is obedience. Your complete surrender. You are not partially surrendering. You are completely surrendering. Whether it's convenient, whether it's not convenient, you are surrendering to the will of God, to the plan and the purpose of God. Whether it is easy or not easy, whether it looks favorable or unfavorable, you are determined in your mind to obey God at all times. And how do you obey? You obey completely, not partially. You obey how? Completely. Talk to me this morning. You obey how? Completely. You also obey cheerfully. You don't obey in grudges. You obey God cheerfully. And you obey quickly. Quickly because the scripture tells us that the the business of the king requires urgent attention. So it is not for you to obey when you think you want to obey. Especially when it comes to the issue of the kingdom. There is time sensitivity to it. So a delayed obedience is also disobedience. You obey completely, you obey cheerfully, and you obey quickly. Luke chapter 11, verse 28. Jesus speaking. He said, blessed are those who hear the word of God and put it into practice. 
It says, blessing will come upon them. And for those who hear the word of the Lord and does not also put into practice, I can't complete that here. But by you just obeying God's word and determining, determining in your mind to put it to action, you are attracting blessings to yourself. And the blessings of God brings obedience. I mean, it brings abundance. Like we read in that Deuteronomy chapter 28, that if you fully obey the Lord your God, and carefully keep all his commands that he's giving you, then you will have no choice but to be attracted to the blessings of God. You don't need to look for those blessings. They will be looking for you. Can I tell you something that you don't know? Every good thing of life that you are looking for is also looking for you. God created those things for your use, for your benefit, for your advantage. So, as you are looking for them, they are looking for you. But the problem is, they are not looking for a version of you that you have at this time. They are looking for a version of you that is fully grown, matured, stabilized in the Lord, into full obedience. And the Lord will give us the grace to be more obedient in Jesus' name. So, why must you obey God? What is the importance what is the big deal for you to obey God? You are obeying God for two reasons. Not under compulsion, not under, um, under duress. You are obeying God first and foremost because you want to show God that you love him. So your obedience is a show of love to your God. It's a demonstration of your love to your God. It is the all mark of your salvation. You claim to be a child of God, then obeying that same God should naturally come easy. You know, in a secular world, every father authenticates whether they have a legitimate child or not by the level of the child's obedience to him. Am I right? I only saw few people, you know, agreeing to that. You know, when, when a child continuously disobeys the father, the father will have a conversation with the mother. Are you sure this is my son or my, or my daughter? So the level of obedience of a child to the father confirms that he is a legitimate child of the father. The same way with God. You claim that you are saved, washed by the blood of Jesus Christ, and God is your father, then obeying God authenticate your salvation. Does it make sense to you now? So, it means that obedience for a child of God is not optional. It is mandatory. It is the only thing that confirms that you are a child of God. Why am I saying this? John chapter 14 verse 15. It says, if you love me, you keep my commandment. You love God. It's, it's, it's not enough for you to say, God, I love you, even though God loves to hear that. But it is more important to God when you obey the things of God, the word of God, the will of God, the way of God. You obey all of those things. Then you would have said that you love God. So obedience is the love language that God is expecting to hear from you. You want to show God that you love him. Obey everything he says. Obey his ways. Obey his plans for your life. John 14, 21. He who has my commandment and keeps them. It is he who loves me. So enough of mouth boasting. God, I love you. Enough of song singing. God, I love you. Those are great in themselves. But it is more important for you to demonstrate that love by obeying God. Coming to church is good. Volunteering in various departments is fantastic. But obeying God is more important than any of these things. The Lord will give your heart to obedience in the name of Jesus. And you are not just obeying because there is nothing at stake. Your blessing is tied to the obedience. 
Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. If you fully obey all these commands, then verse 8, he said God will guarantee a blessing on everything you do. You know what it means for God to guarantee a blessing on your behalf? It means that it doesn't matter whether the devil or the enemy like it or not. You must be successful. But to end that guarantee, God is asking you for obedience. So show your love to God by obeying him. Number two, obedience is a show of your trust in God. That you believe this God. That you trust this God. That is why you want to obey him. And many a times, it is, it is not easy to obey God when you don't have a full knowledge of what the outcome looks like. And that is where many of us miss it. We want to see the end of the road before we start the journey. And then, because we cannot see the end of the road, we don't want to start the journey. Then we disobey God. That is not the way. Obedience is a way that you can express or demonstrate your faith in God. That even though you don't know what the outcome will look like, but because you know that God has spoken to you concerning a particular matter, you move into action. And when you do this, you can be sure that God will bless you. God will make you to be abundant in anything you do. You will not live in scarcity. In the name of Jesus, look at Abraham. When God called Abraham, Abraham had no clue of where he was going. He only had God calling him with a promise to make him a father of nations. Even though he lacked the knowledge of the end result, but he believed God. He trusted God and he obeyed. He obeyed. And God counted that for him as righteousness. And Abraham was blessed so much that even after several generations, we are still all claiming our blessings to Abraham. Isaac is a good example. Genesis 26. Genesis 26 verses 1 to 14. Isaac was living in Egypt. So he was living in Gera. And there was a famine in the country where he lived. And like you and me would normally want to do, he wants to relocate. He wants to relocate in that simple language. And God told him in verse 2, don't go down to Egypt. Can I say to you, each time we disobey God, we go down. Each time anybody disobey God, they are going down. You may not see it immediately. You may not see it physically. But it's a downward thread. It's a downward thread to go against the plan and the will of God. God told him, Genesis 26 verse 2, do not go down to Egypt. Stay in Gera. He wasn't sure of what the outcome would be. But he had the word of God. He held to the word of God. And what happened to Isaac? Verses 12 to 14, the scripture confirmed that is so in the land where there was scarcity, where there was economic depression or uh, economic recession, where there was drought, is so in the same land. The scripture said to us that he reaped in the same year a hundredfold. He began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous on the account of obedience. Obedience. So I don't know what God is speaking to you concerning this time, this season. Your obedience will play a very significant role on how much you can benefit from the blessings of God. And the Lord will help you to obey. In the mighty name of Jesus, obedience to God may be tough sometimes. But if you are clear-minded that it is God speaking to you, I want to beg you, you have no choice. Obey God and see the result. No man obeys God and, and end in shame. It will not start with you. Everyone that obeys God 
has something to show for it. And that will be your testimony in the name of Jesus. So which area of our lives must we obey God? Every area of our lives. Every area of our lives. Anything, any, anything, anything. The scripture says that whether you eat or you drink, whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. So even in the choice of clothing you wear per day, God is interested. Holy Spirit minister to our soul. In the choices of where we want to go, God is interested. Choose to obey God. Many people will have escaped the accident on the journey if they have listened and obeyed to the voice of God. The Lord would open your ears to hear from him in the name of Jesus. So I'm going to focus the areas in four, in four scope, just four scope, to keep the time in check and then we can close. So number one area that you must obey God, and this is not popular, obey God to give. It's not popular. People hate teaching on giving. I don't also teach on giving. But it is still part of the scripture. Obey to give. It is in giving that your blessing is wrapped. Your gift to God and to humanity unwrap the abundant blessings of God in your life. It's okay to live only. But somebody can live only and die and die poor. Is it, is it true or not? Is it the Bible? You believe that? Lazarus, he was only, but he died a beggar. That is not who we want to be. I want to live only and I want to live prosperous. That is the plan of God for us. Top John verse 2. I wish above all things that thou may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. So as you are growing in the Lord, you are growing in material wealth. That is the plan and the purpose of God. But this promise can only come to reality when you obey to give. The budget may be tight, but it does not make the principle of God ungiven to be of no effect. Holiness does not make you rich. It is living only and following the principle of God that makes you rich. And what is the principle of God? Give and it shall be given to you. Luke 6.38 Give and it shall be given to you. Good measure. Pressed down. Shaking together. Running over. Shall men bring to your bosom. So when you don't give, you don't receive, it is God's principle. And God will not violate his principle because your budget is tight. No. Many a times, we need to, we need to close eyes on our current condition and connect ourselves to divine principle for our ways to be open. But people want to wait for the ways to be open before they can connect. You are making the journey longer. It doesn't sound sensible. It doesn't sound logical. But that is the way God works. Give and it shall be given to you. I love 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. Whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly. You know what that means to sow, to sow sparingly? You give God your spear your spare resources. And so, it will not be bad if God also give you his spare. Because the same measure you, you give is the same measure that you receive. The Lord would help our understanding. But it's important to obey God in the area of giving. That is the way to open the doors of abundance. Obey God to forgive. Obey God to forgive. You don't forgive people, then God cannot forgive you. And whoever does not receive God's forgiveness cannot operate in the blessings and the abundance of God's provision. 
Ephesians 4.32 And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as Christ has forgiven you. Obey to forgive, even when he hurts. And he will, he will always be hurt. But despite the pain, despite the hurt, choose to forgive because it is not because you have a choice to forgive because it is a must for you to forgive forgive your friends even though they are not deserving it forgive them freely forgive your neighbor you messed up your your lawn when you were not around you came back forgive them forgive your spouse forgive your spouse even though they've messed up, they, 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 they've done terrible things that you can't even discuss, forgive them. Forgive everyone. It is God's commandment to forgive. It is not an option for you. But you are forgiven because you need to tap into God's abundance. Luke eleven four And forgive us our sins as we also forgive everyone that sin against us. Forgive everyone. Forgive your pastor. Praise the Lord. Pastor is not a saint, I'm sure you know. Pastors too offend people. Forgive your departmental uh, peer. Somebody in your department, they didn't follow your instruction, they didn't take in your advice. Forgive them. Because you want to have a free access to the blessings of God. Forgive your leaders. They disappointed us many times with policies that are not good, you know, to, to our pocket. Forgive everyone. The Lord will help you to forgive in the mighty name of Jesus. It is also important for, uh, to obey God and to love people. Obey God and to love. Love the undeserving. Love them. Love those who hate you. Love your neighbors as yourself. That's what the scripture says. Mark 12, 31. It is not a choice for you to love. Love everyone that God has brought to your network. Love people. It is the intent of God. The scripture says that you cannot claim to love God that you don't see when you have not loved your neighbor that you see every day. So it is God's command and desire for you to love. So you want to tap into the abundance of God. Choose to love. Choose to love. It is not a choice for you. It is a must. It's a necessity. Because that is how you can get the best of God. First John 4 verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another. For God is love. But God is love. Love everybody unconditionally. Even when they don't deserve it. Love the unlovables. Don't write people off. Don't blacklist them in your mind, in your heart. Don't write them off. Love people. And when you do that, you can be sure the Lord Almighty will look favorably unto you and show you love and move you to abundance. In the mighty name of Jesus. So obedience is key. We started with obeying God to give. Obeying God to forgive. Obeying God to love. I love this one. Obey God to try again. Obey God to try again. You wrote the exam. The other time, the result was a disaster. Don't give up on yourself. God has not given up on you. Don't give up on God. You applied for that promotion at work. You were denied for flimsy reasons. When the next opportunity comes, give it another chance. Obey God. Obey the Spirit of God for a second trial. Obey God to start that business again. Even though it didn't work the first time. Don't wash your net because Jesus is in your boat. Luke chapter 5. Luke 5. Verses 1 to 
to 10. We saw the story of Peter. And we know the story. I won't bore you with that story this morning. He had wasted all the night. He had concluded in his mind it was time to go. He was washing his net. And Jesus told him, Brother Peter, can you put back your boat in the water? He obeyed. Then Jesus came the second time. Can I use your boat to preach? He obeyed. And we know the story. Following that obedience. If, if you were Peter, if I was Peter, we would have told Jesus, sorry, I'm done for the night. I need there to go home and rest because I have to come again tonight. I didn't catch anything all, all, all night. But Peter obeyed Jesus. He obeyed Jesus. He obeyed Jesus. And God is talking to somebody. Give that failed attempt a second chance. Try it again. Try it again. Many a time we move out and we close the door on ourselves when God has not closed the door. So don't close the door on yourself. Try again. Give it a second chance. Give that business another trial. Give that application another trial. Give that exam another trial. Give that marriage another chance. You think it's time to walk away. I can't cope again. Obey the spirit of the Lord. As it comes to you this morning, let God come in the second time to help you both to fix what was wrong. And God will do it. So it is in obedience that you can get the best from God. It may not make sense to you to obey. It may not make sense for you to trust. But God is saying to you this season, your obedience is what will guarantee your abundance. Abundance of joy. Abundance of harvest. Abundance of resources. Abundance of testimony. Abundance of good health. Obedience is your key this season. And the Lord will help you to obey. In the mighty name of Jesus. Look at the lineage of Abraham. From Abraham to Isaac and to Jacob. We saw them growing in obedience. And they were also growing in abundance. Abraham was great. Isaac was very great. Jacob was exceedingly great. I pray for you and your generation. May you all live in obedience to God. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And how do you obey God? I'm not kidding. It is not easy to obey many a times. How do you obey God? I will share two scriptures and I will really teach on this so that we can leave this place with a new mindset of possibility to live in obedience. How do you obey God? Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 tells us that this book of law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it. Rule that line, meditate on it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For when you do that, say you will make your wish prosperous, and then you will have good success. Look at the sequence. It starts with meditation. Meditation. You are not glossing through the line of the scripture. You are sitting on it. You are thinking, you are pondering. You are, you, are, you are looking at it every single moment. And then it becomes easy to bring it into action, to observe, to do. Are you seeing that on the screen? So the reason why it's difficult for us sometimes to obey is because we gloss through that wall. So we don't allow the world to sit within our subconscious. So meditation allows you to internalize the word, the word of God. It helps you to internalize the word of God 
in my family, my, I mean, my children know my, the most favorite verse I tell them every single time I have opportunity. My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. Before I finish the quote, they, can, they will finish it for me. It is to help them internalize that so that when I'm not there, when their mother is not there, they can leave the house. So meditation helps you to internalize the scripture. Then it becomes easy for you to observe and to do. And as you observe and do, see the next sequence, then you make your way prosperous. And you have good success. That is abundance. Is it coming together? So how do you internalize the world? You are meditating. How do you internalize? The effect of meditating on the scripture is for you to be transformed into the same image the scripture is presenting to you. Is it making sense? And 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 expounds on that for us. You are meditating to, to get transformed into the same image. If the scripture is calling you a saint in Christ, as you meditate day in, day out, a point will come in your life that you rise with that knowledge and that conviction and becomes easy for you to walk in this sinful world as a saint of God. 2 Corinthians 3.18 It says to us, But we all with unveiled face beholding what are we beholding? The scripture. We are beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord and we are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just by the spirit of the Lord. Look at it. We are in the New Testament. We have the gift of the Holy Spirit to go and read the scripture and have an accurate understanding of what the scripture is telling us to have. Just by the spirit of the Lord, we are having the accurate knowledge, accurate understanding, perfect conviction. And see the image on the screen. The intent of that is as you meditate. The first image on the left, as you meditate, on the word of God, the end product is that you become transformed into the same thing. Look at the lady, I mean, looking at her face in the mirror. The image in the mirror is the same image in front of the mirror. That is the end product. So, stop rushing through the scripture. It's not how long of it that you read. If it's one verse or two verses that you can read, understand, study, internalize, and become transformed in it, you will live a stronger life of being transformed to the same image that the scripture is painting to you. And then obedience becomes a natural effect of all of those investments of time and interaction with scripture. Make sense to you? So you are leaving this place as a new person that can live out the scripture. That can become the living epistle that is known and read by all men. People are tired of reading um, scripture. They want to see the scripture in you. They want to see you as the embodiment of Christ in our generation. They want to see a complete obedience in your life. And you are doing all of this because you love God. Because you trust God. And there's nothing you do for God that goes wasted. There's a promise of abundance that is tied to this. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1. If you fully obey, if you fully obey the commands of God that is given to you, Let's rise to our feet. Ask God to give you the mind of obedience. A heart of obedience. Speak to God. That whatever it is that makes it impossible, difficult for you to obey God, that the Lord will help you. 
This morning, you are leaving this place with a renewed determination to meditate on the scripture, to be transformed by the word of God. That you will not only see the scripture written in the letter, that you will live out the scripture, that you become the living epistle, the living Bible, that the Lord will make it easy for you to obey. Talk to God. It's okay to pray aloud. It's not a silent prayer. God help us to obey. Help us to grow in obedience. It will be a wrong prayer to pray for abundance when we are living in disobedience. It's a better prayer to pray for the grace to obey God. Then abundance naturally follows. Naturally follows. You've read a lot on giving. Pray that the Lord will help you to obey in giving. You've read a lot on forgiveness. Pray that the Lord will help you to forgive. To forgive. You've read a lot on love. Pray that the Lord will help you to grow in love. To obey him more in love. Pray that the Lord will help you to try again. Whatever it is that you have abandoned because it didn't work the first time. That the Lord will help you to believe him, to trust him and to go back to it. And as you are going back, the Lord is guaranteeing success for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Talk to God. Talk to God. Just one minute to close. Talk to God. Father, we receive grace for obedience. We receive grace for obedience to follow your instructions, to follow your will, your ways in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. This is the Liberty Assembly. Raising a glorious generation.